hey everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to my lightning talk. There are many quality talks that uh, you could be watching instead, but uh, you made the mistake of coming here to mine. So uh, I hope you get something out of this one. My name is uh, Eugene Romero, and you might wonder who is this Eugene Romero and why do I have to listen to him? Well, you are here, and uh, I do have the microphone, so that is one reason, of course. Uh, but I have been a professional breaker of things at Capgemini now for the past uh, five and a half years. I also have been in the IT industry for a little over 15 years. Uh, I do know I look much younger than that, but been around the block a couple of times. And finally, just a little fun fact about myself, I was voted most likely to quote The Simpsons at inappropriate times. So I might drop some Simpsons line here, here and there uh, during this talk, so if you hear anything, point it out later. Very good, but before we begin, uh, I know you saw that title and you thought, wow, what is he going to say? Is he going to tell us that we can finally get rid of these stupid pull requests that we hate so much? Well, no. Uh, this talk, as you can see in my slide, uh, is clickbait. So I'm not going to tell you stop doing pull requests. I'm not going to tell you this is uh, not, not something that you should be doing in your project. But instead, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the issues that we might find with the process around pull requests and if there is something that we can do to make it better. Because it is true that there is a fundamental problem with pull requests. Uh, I'm gonna ask a few questions now and I'd like, uh, like to ask for audience participation so if you can put your hands up. Um, first off, are most of you working with development or some sort of uh, technical uh, role? Put your hand up if this is true. Okay, good. So uh, you will be familiar with some of these questions. So then raise your hand if you dislike stopping your work to review pull requests. If this is true of you, put your hand up. All right. Here's another one. I sometimes don't fully understand the code I am approving. <laughs> put your hand up. That's fine. No shame. <laughs> All right. Here's one more. Seeing this makes my day better. No hands. All right, there we go. Here's another one. Waiting on a pull request to be approved has stopped me from deploying an urgent fix. Yeah, so about half the room, I'd say. Some uh, reluctant hands maybe thinking about it, but uh, this has happened to many of us. I sometimes have to create pull requests for tiny repetitive changes. Is this true of you? Show of hands. All right. So as you can see, and just by looking around when I was asking these questions, we all share these troubles. These are things that are complicated or these are things that maybe introduce friction into our workday. Um, and I have found that one way of finding out if there is anything that people have issues with is to look up uh, memes on the subject. So I went into Google and I said, uh, hey Google, do you have any pull request memes for me? And uh, Google had plenty. So. You know, you got uh, many, you got some having to do with uh, the size of pull requests, uh, some having to do with just a general feeling of getting a pull request sent to you. Uh, again, some more having to do with the size of these pull requests, uh, having to wait for approvers. Uh, again, with the size of pull requests. Seems like size of pull requests is an issue that a lot of people have um, problems with, right? So we see that there is, there is something there. There is something that clearly could work better. But how can we make it work better? Well, let's discuss, first of all, some of the issues that there are with the process of pull requests. One of them is that pull requests can easily get way too big. You start working on a change, and at first it's a small change, but then you keep adding things to it. And while you're doing that, you realize like, oh, you know what? I could also do this other thing on the side while I'm already fixing this pull request. Someone's going to have to look at this anyway, so I might as well just add this bug fix in there and maybe add this little improvement. And all of a sudden, you have 547 files that you've changed. So the, as you know, the bigger a pull request uh, gets, the more complicated it is, uh, both for you to understand it, and you are the author of it, but also for someone else to come and review it. Pull requests uh, can be hard to understand. Many times when you are looking at a pull request, you, you might not right away understand what it is that the author had in mind when they were working on this. Maybe you don't understand the solution that they tried to implement. Or maybe, like we just said, the pull request was just way too big and you're just struggling to even make any kind of sense out of it, right? 
Um, when pull requests are hard to understand, this many times leads to what is called LGTM syndrome, uh, or looks good to me syndrome, or something that I like to call Stevie Wonder approvals. Um, this is something that you know, now that I think about it, might not be politically correct to say anymore, but I'm going to say it anyways because it's in the slides. This place I used to work at uh, some years ago, we had this concept of Stevie Wonder approvals. There was times when you had a pull request that just needed to go through and you did not have time to explain this to anyone and you did not have the time for someone to actually sit down and really do a good review. So we created uh, this picture. Uh, that we would send to each other whenever we needed this. So you just send the link to the pull request, you just send this. And of course, uh, what's the issue with Stevie Wonder? He's a great musician, uh, he's also blind, right? Uh, so the idea here was, could you just please cover your eyes, press approve, and uh, YOLO it. This is a problem that is very, very closely tied to the fact that pull requests can be very difficult to understand at times. Pull requests can take a long time to be merged. People are not sitting around waiting for you to send them your pull request. People have other things to do. You have things to do. Maybe someone else sends you a pull request, but you already had your, you had your day or maybe even your week planned out. So it might not be that you can just drop everything and go review this. And it's the same for whoever's reviewing yours, right? Maybe they have other things that they need to do. So sometimes you're sitting there for hours, maybe days, hopefully not, but maybe even weeks, waiting until someone can uh, take five minutes out of their time and come around to look at your pull request. And at that point, they're probably just going to still wonder it anyways, right? Finally, pull requests can lead to responsibility shifting. What's responsibility shifting? Well, I think these, uh, this picture uh, describes it well, right? The one who reviews a pull request, if there are any issues with the code that is introduced to the code base, the one who reviews it will say, well, you wrote the code, this is your problem. But the one who wrote the code will say, yeah, but you reviewed it, so you said it was okay. So now, instead of taking ownership for the code and the changes in it, we're kind of trying to make this someone else's problem, someone else's responsibility, so that if uh, your bank goes to shit, uh, all of a sudden it's not your problem, and then maybe someone else uh, can be held responsible for this, right? So. How can we solve some of these issues? Well, it's very simple, and it was already in the title of the talk, get rid of pull requests, right? No, not exactly. You cannot just get rid of pull requests. These things serve a purpose. There is a reason behind having this process in place. But there are some things that can be done better. And there is something that I like to uh, tell developers I work with, or whenever I'm in a team, I try to uh, slowly get them to start thinking in this way uh, whenever there are code changes that need to be made to think about the question, is a pull request needed? It might not be that every single code change in a code base requires the entire process of a pull request. For example, Say that you are introducing new functionality into your application, into your code base. You're actually creating something brand new that wasn't there before. Maybe it's a good idea to get this code reviewed. Maybe the other person can actually come in and see if this is uh, in line with what the goals of the application are or whatever the goals of the sprint, iteration, whatever it is where, right? It might also be good to have a pull request for potentially destructive changes. It might be that the changes that you have to introduce into the code base, once they get applied, could break shit. So if there is something, they could break the banking system. Again, if there is something that you have to change that you say this is high risk, definitely get another set of eyes looking at this thing, maybe even several sets of eyes, right? Hard to reverse changes. There might be changes that once they are made, it's very difficult to roll back. It can be database changes. It can be changes to something that once it rolls out into production will actually fundamentally change the way that something is working in the infrastructure, in the application. And it might not be so simple for that specific change to be rolled back into a previously working state. So if you're going to make a change like this, get someone to look at your pull request. Also, maybe you are changing the approach uh, of how something is done in your code base. 
maybe there was something that was done at one point, uh, some solution that was found, and at that time that worked well, that was a correct approach based on whatever limitations there were at the time. Maybe now there's a new, different way of doing this, and you are therefore kind of changing fairly substantially the way that certain things are working. At that time, it could be a good idea, again, to get someone else to look at these changes in the code. However, if we have the question of uh, is a pull request needed and we say yes, it is needed, then there is one principle that you should always keep in mind and I swear to God, the next person who I work with who doesn't keep this in mind, I will, I will stare at them angrily. I will do no more because <laughs> I'm actually a chicken. But if a pull request is needed, keep it small. And I want everyone to say this three times, so say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. Keep it small. Keep it small. Keep it small. Tattoo this on your arm. Write it on the inside of your eyelids. Do whatever you got to do to remember this. Keep your pull requests small. This is uh, something that was said by Dragan Stepanovich, and he said, if a pull request is big, it takes a long time to review, lots of back and forth with the author, dragging for many days or weeks. It's already too late and very difficult to course correct, right? It's been too much time that has been spent on this already. We cannot quickly roll back and do, do something new. Reviewers often tend to give up on the ability to steer the work, merely commenting, looks good to me, and approving the PR, hoping to build in quality later. That, of course, rarely happens. So if your pull request has hundreds of files that have been changed, it is too big, you're going to have a problem. The quality of this code is not going to be good. So how can you do this? How can you keep your pull request small? Well, one way is to break it into the smallest possible parts. It is true that sometimes a change, new functionality, some, something that is happening will need a lot of different files touch, a lot of thing, different changes, but try to break these changes into the smallest possible bits so that they can be reviewed one at a time and over a period of maybe a few minutes as opposed to a period of several hours. You can use short-lived branches. You can use feature gates to be able to accomplish this, just to make these small changes in a way that will not break your application, but will still allow for these pull requests to be of high quality and small. This should be, at the most, one or two days of work. If you've been sitting on an open branch for weeks, it's not going to be good. You're going to have to go back and rethink about how to do this, because whoever's going to review that is going to hate you. So. If there is a question then of, do we need a pull request? That also means that there are some situations in which we do not need a pull request. So when do we not need pull requests? For example, when we're doing very simple or repetitive changes. Maybe the entire change you're making is just upgrading some versions of some libraries. Do You really need someone to come in and look at them and say, yes, these numbers do look good indeed. Maybe you have a, a bunch of microservices that all kind of share a similar structure, and now you have one change that you have to make across all of these different services. So you have to make the exact same change, but maybe 20 times. Maybe all 20 times don't necessarily need to be reviewed by someone. Maybe don't waste someone's time doing this. There might be changes on which there are no other experts. I've worked on teams, my main focus is uh, infrastructure, and I have worked on teams where I am the only one who does infrastructure. Everyone else is maybe developers, it can be back-end, front-end, and so on. Uh, and there are situations in which they are not interested in learning infrastructure. They want to do their work, and they want me to do mine, but they don't want to know what it is that I am doing necessarily. In these teams, if there is a hard requirement for there to be a pull request for any changes, this means that anything I do in my work, I'm going to have to send to one of them who does not understand what I'm doing and does not care to understand what I'm doing for them just to, again, Stevie Wonder it, press yes, approve, and merge that into the code base. At that point then, is there really any value in doing this? Maybe not. Also, non-destructive or easily reverse changes. If you have changes that have to be made, to your code base, but these changes can be rolled back quickly if necessary, if there is something wrong with the change. It might not be that important, important that vital to use a pull request for these changes uh, to be brought into the code base. 
So at the end of the day, uh, this talk, of course, was about pull requests. But really, if you take away one thing from it, is this. And I call this, uh, this is part of my collection of, uh, of uh, counter, uh, counter I, can't, I can't even say this word. What's the word I'm looking for? Of, uh, let's call them revolutionary uh, slides. Uh, question everything. Just because your team has been doing something for years, or developers at large have been doing something for years, doesn't necessarily mean that it is still valuable for your specific situation. So if you are in a team that does whatever rituals, daily stand-ups, pull requests for everything, any kind of ritual, every once in a while sit down and say, hey, is this still giving us value? If the answer is yes, wonderful. But if the answer is no, maybe say, how can we change this and make it better so that we can actually derive value from it. That's me. If you want to see the uh, slides, you can find them on my website, uh, dam.engineer. Uh, you can also find me on, uh, I will continue to call it Twitter until the end of time, so you can find me there. Uh, thank you very much.